Hello, my name is Abigail and welcome back to Polyglot Progress. It is somehow already the start of June. Honestly, it feels like there have not been five months of the year so far. To me, it feels like there have been two months. First month being the first four months smashed together in one month where I got ready to move and I moved and May. And yet at the same time, it feels like so much time has passed since I posted my 2021 goals video, which is why I sat down, I reflected on how half of my year has gone, I planned out quarter three, I sat down to film this video, and then I realized that quarter two isn't over. So I'm gonna roll with it. You heard it here first, folks. Quarter three is nearly four months long and quarter two is significantly smaller than all of the other quarters. So starting off with just my language learning as a whole and in general, I didn't make as much progress as I had wanted to or do as many things as I had wanted to because honestly, I was just so busy and moving drained all of the energy out of me. But at the same time, I would say that the end of quarter two in May, the second month of the year for me, I. I really kind of turned that around and I'm headed in a really good direction, I would say, with my language learning. So I think it's really good that if I am making a quarter a lot longer than it necessarily needs to be, I'm glad that it is quarter three because I think I'm currently set up to do quite well quarter three with my language learning. So with that extra time, hopefully I will be able to accomplish even more. I would say, honestly, I am the happiest I have been with my languages and my language learning, my relationship with each of the languages, my routine, the things that I'm doing, my outlook on all of it, than I maybe ever have been. And I think a huge part of this is at the start of this year, one of the things that I had said was one of my overall goals was to stop focusing and stop having such an outlook based around progressing in my languages and instead focus on the things that I already can do in my languages. When I first started language learning, I would say that a lot of my goals were based around the CEFR scale or language levels. They were something manageable and almost kind of tangible for me to work on and work on progressing towards. And even as I stepped away from that, I think a lot of my mindset was still things like I want to reach an advantage level in German or I want to improve my German so that I can watch movies and read books and have conversations in German and all of these other things. And I realized at the start of this year that something that I really need to work on is just acknowledging the fact that if I have at least kind of an intermediate level, I can just do those things already. I can't do them seamlessly and without occasionally needing to look up words or making mistakes or things like that, but I can do those things already. And so I I just wanted to shift my mindset from being doing immersion activities to improve my languages to doing immersion activities because I can and looking at the fact that if my goals are to be able to read books and watch movies and have conversations in German, I can just do those things now. So while I would love to see myself progress in all of these languages, I am just enjoying the journey itself of language learning way more and not really thinking about the end goal because as I said in my first video, I don't really think there is an end goal. I don't think we ever stop. So trying to move towards that is kind of pointless and ruins the fun. My overall theme for 2021 for my language learning is integrated and intertwined, which is a classy way of saying that I am working on really just making language learning a part of my life and using languages a part of my life. And I'm also really working on being balanced in terms of the languages and how often I'm using them or studying them, in terms of the types of activities that I'm doing when I'm studying, in terms of immersion and active study, just all around balance. And I would say that this is going pretty well. My routine is definitely starting to fall into place. It's starting to be something I'm pretty consistent with. This wasn't always the case throughout quarter one and quarter two. I would say that there were patches of it being really good and patches of it being not so good. I got the flu in January despite people wearing masks and social distancing. Just Abigail things. I had to actually move myself. I had to set up my apartment and do all of those other kinds of things that come with moving. Definitely during a lot of those times, my routine was not 
exactly what I wanted it to be. But at the same time, there were a lot of stretches where I was super consistent with it exactly the way that I foresaw it when I planned it out at the start of this year. And I would say even during those hard times, I either was actively making the choice to kind of put a pause on that routine and focus on whatever was going on, or I was trying my best to do as much as I could. I think even while I moved, I never really stopped completely doing language stuff. I listened to podcasts in German and Spanish while I drove here. I did language learning in whatever way I could. It just wasn't much and it wasn't what I had necessarily intended as being my routine at the start of this year. The one thing that I feel like really hasn't happened for me yet is fitting Italian and French in. I had my priorities and it helped a lot when it came to moving and being stressed out at the start of this year. Because French and Italian were lowest tier they did get the lowest amount of attention. I also, even though I was doing better with immersion, did not read or watch nearly as many things as I had set out to do in either quarter. I would say that quarter two, I did a lot better with this, again, because it involved a little bit of time where I was already settled into my apartment, or I guess more so settling into my apartment. But in quarter one and quarter two, I think I total read maybe four or five books. I don't even want to know how many books behind I am in my 50 book Goodreads challenge and I've definitely watched less than 20 movies so far this year and I'm aiming to watch 75 so I'm definitely behind for both. I think the thing that makes up for that though is that I am doing great with my challenge of doing 50 to 75 language exchanges or language classes. I don't remember the exact number I'm at right now but I believe it's around 35 and I'm really excited about that. This is the most consistent I have been with language calls ever in my life and part of that is definitely just attributed to the fact that now I don't have school so I have a bit more time to take those classes and also to make money to take those classes. But beyond the cost holding me back, I definitely feel like I was much more uncomfortable with language calls previously. This has been something that I've been getting better at over all of the years of language learning, but I think especially recently, maybe because of that mindset shift, I feel a lot more comfortable before language classes, even with new tutors. In terms of quarter three, I definitely want to really fine tune my routine and fix all of those problems that I'm still seeing. I don't think you can ever truly perfect a routine since so much of it involves making it fit around your life and your lifestyle and life changes. That's part of why I don't feel bad about the fact that sometimes I did a little bit more immersion or didn't necessarily hit an hour of study every single day while I was moving. Things have to adapt and fit what's going on in your life. But I'm hoping that because I am being quite consistent right now and have kind of set myself up to do well this next quarter, that in quarter three I can really focus on making sure that all of the languages are involved in the routine, so making sure that French and Italian are present as much as I want them to be, and really just feeling good about the balance between immersion and active study and all of the activities that I'm doing. I also want to get better at actually reading and watching things. In fact, the goal that I am setting myself for this quarter is at least 15 books. This will still have me behind on my Goodreads goal. In fact, I'll actually be even more behind because I need to read more than four books a month in order to keep up with it. Because I have not been reading that many books, 15 for this quarter is a huge number for me. I might need to be a little bit more realistic with where I actually am this year versus where I wanted to be back at the start of this year, which means for now 15 books is my goal and I will just be a little bit behind and maybe for like the fifth year in a row not hit 50 books on Goodreads. I did not accomplish my goal quarter one of doing a language challenge. I did kind of half participate in the 40 hours seven days language challenge. I tried to kind of study every single day. I think I passed that. I think I got like seven or eight hours total but Definitely a much different experience than actually going for the 40 hours. So this quarter, I would like to complete the italki language challenge. I sign up for this every single time that it happens and I have yet to complete it because something always comes up. So I signed up again for this one. I put myself as having the goal of doing 12 hours, but my real goal is more like 12 to 16. And of course, if I can do more than that, that would be great. I've already done, I believe four and a half hours and I am signed up for enough lessons 
lessons right now that by July when the challenge ends, I should have done at least 10 hours. So I just need to schedule a couple more language lessons, maybe just deviate a little bit from my typical language learning schedule on italki right now and maybe take a French lesson or an Italian lesson or something like that to kind of fill in those 12 to 16 hours. Part of the problem right now is just that I am taking three lessons a week, but one of those is my ASL lesson, which is not through italki, so those 90 minutes every week are just not counted. I'm also potentially considering doing kind of a mini immersion weekend challenge for myself this quarter. I just haven't totally figured it out logistically yet. It's definitely not a huge goal for me. It's not my strongest goal this quarter by any means, but if it's possible, I feel like it would be really fun to do, so I want to do that at some point. And then my last overall goal is I want to try doing some type of creative writing in my target languages this quarter. I'll talk about it more with individual languages, but I did okay with being consistent with writing this past half of the year. Not as well as I wanted to do, much like all of the things, but I didn't totally fail with my journal entry goals. But all of those entries have either been journal entries about things in my life or sort of essays based on articles I've read or vocabulary I've learned, things like that. So I just want to try doing something a little bit more creative, give me a chance to push myself in some of my target languages and also just have another way of getting my languages integrated with my life. Moving on to individual languages, I would say that Bulgarian has seen a lot of progress and I am really happy with the way my goals for quarter one and quarter two went for it. My overall goal for the whole year for Bulgarian was to pass my previous highest level. I know, I know, a level goal right after I said I didn't do those anymore. Shh. I feel like I honestly accomplished this goal probably in quarter one. I think it felt a lot farther from where I was at when I was setting my goals at the end of 2020, but it wasn't that far. It was pretty easy to reach. I was already kind of at that point, I think. But I'm of course really happy that I accomplished that goal. I am really, really glad that I no longer feel like I am just working on getting back to where I was with Bulgarian. It feels like everything is new and I am making progress and stepping forward and all of those things. I'd also say that I have gotten past a lot of my previous hurdles with Bulgarian. For one, I am no longer stuck in that cycle of picking Bulgarian up, trying to just catch back up to where I was, having to put it down because something comes up in my life and that's the one that I can set down and just continuing that cycle. It took almost almost four years for Bulgarian to find its place in my life again, but I am really glad that it finally has. And one of the things that has been a part of that newfound stability is that I have been really consistent with my Bulgarian study. It didn't always happen when I was moving. There were days where I literally woke up packed and went to sleep, but I really did try as much as I could to keep up with it. And even if that was 10 minutes of study or something like that, I would say that I had Bulgarian in my life pretty often, and most of the time it was 60 minutes or at least 30 to 45 minutes. And although I think part of it is because maybe the goal wasn't as far away as I originally thought, I do think that that consistency is also a lot of the reason that I feel like I passed my old level so quickly. I definitely wouldn't say that Bulgarian is easy now, it's definitely still, for me, the most difficult language that I've studied, but I no longer feel like it feels different, it just feels slightly slightly more difficult than the other languages and I feel a lot more comfortable and confident learning things. I'm seeing a lot more connections. I also made a lot of progress on Colloquial Bulgarian and Bulgarian Pod 101. Both are resources that I said that I wanted to finish in quarter one. And the reason that I didn't finish these is actually not because of moving or because of time or anything else. I actually decided that I didn't want to finish these in quarter one or quarter two. Both resources were really, really helpful for me at the start of this year, but I hit a point in both of them where with colloquial Bulgarian, it wasn't really helpful as my main resource anymore. It became a lot more helpful as more of a supplemental resource. And I hit a point in Bulgarian Pod 101 where it honestly felt unhelpful. I guess 
any new language is good language, but at the same time, it just felt like I was wasting my time trying to learn the words and phrases that they were giving me, and I could have used that time in a much better way, focusing on materials that were more gauged at the level that I was at. So I decided that I did not want to continue with that. I didn't want to work on things that were more advanced, especially when I was just going to continue getting more and more advanced. I'm at, I think, the end of unit two, which is the beginner kind of pathway on Bulgarian Pod 101, and I don't want to move to the intermediate pathway if I already feel like it's more advanced than I want it to be. So those goals didn't happen, but not because of time or anything like that. I just decided that they weren't really goals I wanted to have anymore. Moving on to quarter three and what I do want to have happen, I needed a new goal for myself since I passed my goal for the year of moving past my old highest level. And I honestly don't know what my goal for the year is right now for Bulgarian, what my goal is for the next six months, but I do know what my two main goals for quarter three are going to be. So my overall goals for Bulgarian are that I want to be able to understand 90% of a Peppa Pig episode. I know, really lofty goals here. And the second thing is that I want to be able to sit and film a video that maybe ends up being five to 10 minutes long once it's edited on a specific subject. That one might be more of a goal for the rest of this year and not quarter three, but I think if I really push myself, I might be able to do it, so I am setting it as a quarter three goal. I'm going to try to push myself to get to that point. And in terms of the things I'm going to do to hopefully get myself there, I want to finish Colloquial Bulgarian. Like I said, I'm only really using it as a supplement at this point, but I only have two chapters left, so even with it only as a supplement, I have four months to get through it. I think I can get through Colloquial Bulgarian. I also have a A1 monolingual textbook that I did not have at the start of this year, so it was not involved in my goals that I would like to get through as well. I'm currently on page 50 out of 114, so I'm about halfway done. Um, so I think I can actually move through this really quickly. I thought about including this one and the A2 textbook that I have from the same series, but I don't know. I think the way that I want to go through this is doing every single exercise in the book and really, really focusing on it. So I might make it take a little bit longer than I usually would with a textbook. I just feel like a lot of the material in this book is things that I have seen before but tend to forget quite easily, so I want to make sure that it's really just in my head. And if I happen to move on to the A2 textbook, great. If I decide I want to work a little bit more on Bulgarian Pod 101, great. If I move on to Intensive Bulgarian, great. I just really want to only set that goal of finishing Colloquial Bulgarian and that A1 textbook. I want to continue my weekly lessons. I feel like those have been helping me a lot. I want to keep writing in my journal in Bulgarian. I was pretty good about this in quarter one, less good with this in quarter two, so I want to get myself to a point where I am writing at least one journal entry a month and I more so want to make sure that I start to post it somewhere to get corrections. I haven't really been sharing those as much. And also as a part of that, I want to write them in cursive. I don't like writing in cursive. I don't do it in English. I don't do it in any language. But I have noticed recently when reading things with my tutor that I have a bit of trouble reading in cursive sometimes in Bulgarian. I will mix some of the letters. For example, the ch and uh, g I mix for some reason. And when it comes to me writing things, I often have to Google Bulgarian cursive just to kind of remind myself of what certain letters look like. For some reason, I always have to double check that the way I'm writing b is correct. So I need to just get better with that, make it a lot more comfortable and easy for myself and just something that's a lot more familiar. And I think that probably the easiest way to do that is just to write my journal entries in cursive as much as I don't like it. I think it's for the best. I'd like to continue watching Bulgarian YouTube videos. I do watch on YouTube a lot of kids Bulgarian shows like Peppa Pig or 
I found Franklin dubbed into Bulgarian, which is great. I haven't watched Franklin since I was an actual child, but I have also been watching just some Bulgarian YouTubers and I definitely don't understand much of them, much less than I understand of the kids shows, but they give me a chance to hear Bulgarian the way I might speak it instead of the way a kid might speak it. I can start to pick up words that I recognize and maybe learn a few new words through context. And lastly, I would like to finally find and watch a Bulgarian movie. I have been trying my hardest. This one is not a goal that I have just not done out of time either. I simply cannot find a Bulgarian movie. A lot of you let me know on a previous video that I might not be finding things on Netflix because a lot of Bulgarians don't use Netflix, which was very helpful, thank you. But I can't figure out where Bulgarians are watching movies because I cannot find movies anywhere. So this is a cry for help to all of my Bulgarian viewers or anyone who has any information about where I can find a Bulgarian movie. Please help me. Moving on to American Sign Language. One of my goals for the whole year was to finish Queer ASL's 101 and 102 levels. I took ASL 101 back in quarter one and then I took a little bit of a break I guess during quarter two and I'm currently registered for 102. I've had two classes so far, so it's still the beginnings of that course, but I am enjoying it a lot, learning a lot again. So after I finish ASL 102, I will technically have completed that goal for the year. That wasn't my overall goal. My overall goal was I wanted to be able to fingerspell and just have kind of basic conversations, which I'd say I'm also working towards with those classes. I can now kind of introduce myself and do very basic things and I'm progressing to do other very basic things. I did not do well with doing one kind of video diary per month to kind of just keep up with my progress in ASL. Honestly, ASL really moved to the back burner while I was moving. During that time between ASL 101 and 102, I did not do pretty much anything in ASL. All of my languages kind of got pushed to the back burner other than Bulgarian, honestly, during that time. So ASL was a little bit dormant for a little while, but it's back now. So in quarter three, I want to finish ASL 102. I want to continue learning all of the things from that course and doing well in that course really feel like I solidify that information. And I also wanna go back and review ASL 101. I also want to register for ASL 103 when 102 ends. Even though my goal for the year was ASL 101 and 102, I think obviously depending on queer ASL's cycles and when they end up having more classes, I think I actually could get through one or two more courses and maybe even finish all five of the courses they have. Quarter three will definitely end before I even could finish ASL 103 if I do take it right after 102, but I do think now for this year, I may end up trying to take both 104 levels after 103 as well. Again, some of this depends not on me. It depends on when the organization has classes and whether they fill up too fast or not. But my hope for myself is that I can maybe get through all of those levels. I also in quarter three really want to start doing ASL outside of the queer ASL classes. I really have been very reliant on those. At the start of this year, I was super busy. So I just kind of let myself rely on the 101 course and focus on that. And it was great because I really made sure that I solidified all of the information from that class. But now that I have a little bit more time and would like to, I really want to branch out just from the class that I'm taking. So I don't have a really set numerical goal for this, but I would like to start using life print and just work my way through some of the lessons there. Again, I don't have a specific number, but just kind of learn signs, maybe even more signs that go along with the themes that I'm learning about about in my course, use it as a supplement to the signs that I'm given, things like that. And finally, similar to the Bulgarian cursive thing, I want to just work on my finger spelling. I obviously know the alphabet after 101. I can finger spell. I can understand finger spelling, but I just feel like the speed at which I spell things and the speed at which I comprehend what others are spelling out, especially if I'm looking at their eyes and not their hands, is not great. So I want to just continue working on that. It's not new things. It's not words and phrases and things, but similar to the Bulgarian cursive, 
it's important and it's one of those foundational building blocks so I want to just work on improving it but also like the cursive it should be pretty easy to just work into what I'm already doing maybe when I learn a new sign just spelling it out as well getting a little bit of practice trying to move a little bit quicker it's not super difficult to work in and it doesn't feel super thrilling and new and exciting but it's important, so I'm definitely gonna do it. Moving on to Spanish. My overall goal for the year was to speak confidently and comfortably and really just work on my spoken output of Spanish. And I'd say that this is going really well. My Spanish has definitely improved quite a bit over the last several months. I actually feel the best about my Spanish progress right now out of all of my languages and other than French, I think that I actually feel the most comfortable speaking Spanish out of all of my languages right now, which means that yes, I am obviously doing really well with the whole speaking comfortably and confidently thing, but I think the thing that really shows that is that at this time last year, I had said that I felt like my Spanish was the worst out of all of my languages. The consistency and work with the tutor has definitely helped. My R's are getting better. I still can't roll them and I can't do them on their own so I can't really demonstrate right now but you'll hear it at some point point. and even what I can get isn't good it's not a full R like I said it's not rolled completely but it's improving it's also been really nice to now be a bit more surrounded by Spanish I live in Texas now things are written bilingually in stores when you go to Target there are things in English and in Spanish which to a lot of people in the US probably doesn't seem that out of the ordinary, but that was never a thing in the Northeast. And so just being able to read signs in Spanish or listen to the radio in Spanish when I walk into a store or things like that has been really exciting for me. It's been a good reminder every time I go out to continue working on my Spanish and just makes me excited to be able to understand more and more. I've been very good about reading intensively in Spanish. This again was not always the case. Quarter one and quarter two saw a lot of moments where that didn't really happen, but by the end of quarter two, I really turned that around. I would say that now I'm usually reading a news article at least once a week in Spanish, and at this point, even looking up every single word that I don't know, it is about less than 15 words each time that I'm writing down. So I am getting very, very comfortable reading news articles in Spanish, which is really exciting. That's not to say that I'm at a super advanced level in Spanish. I'm comfortable reading articles in Spanish and using advanced vocabulary in Spanish, but I don't always know the vocabulary for very basic everyday things. I've also been okay with writing. I have been trying to journal quite a bit. I would say that Spanish has maybe been the language I've written the most in this year. I don't know if I necessarily hit my one entry a month goal, but I have done quite well with it. And definitely some months I was writing more than once, so it probably averages out to be about one a month. One thing that I've not been really good at is watching things in Spanish. I've watched maybe one or two movies in Spanish this year, and I started watching Casa de Flores, but I'm really not very far in it. I am, however, really enjoying it, so I want to continue watching that and I would like to watch more movies. My conjugation when it comes to different tenses is still quite a bit of a mess, but I'm working on it. I'm getting better at it when I speak. And outside of that, I am way better at speaking Spanish now than I was a year ago, but even than I was five months ago. I'm not at the point where I can understand or say anything at any time about any topic, but I feel a lot more comfortable when I'm talking about things than I did previously. I want to continue taking lessons every other week at least. I feel like my lessons have been a huge part of why I'm feeling so much better about my Spanish, if not the only reason I'm feeling so much better about my Spanish. I want to watch at least six movies, and if I can watch more than six movies in Spanish, that would be great. Again, it would help me catch up to what my goal for the year was previously. One thing that I feel like I really need to work on right now is my Spanish listening skills and I think that a great way to do that would be through watching movies and there's also a huge hispanophone is that the word like francophone but for spanish speaking cinematic world and so I just want to start to watch those movies that I haven't watched before from a lot of countries I may have never even seen movies from before and through that improve my listening and continue watching Casa de Flores but um 
movies I think are maybe a little bit more priority, but at times that you just want to watch a TV show. So probably I'll watch a bit more of that as well. I want to work on the Duolingo tree in Spanish. Um, one thing that I said at the start of this year was that I wanted to work on the Esperanto tree solely because I like seeing my trees on Duolingo completed. I went on the other day and I learned that the Spanish tree had been totally redone. There is so much more to the tree now, so many more lessons than have been there previously. So my tree is no longer completed and there's a lot more Spanish material to go through. So I'd like to do that. I think a lot of it, if not all of it, is going to be kind of repeated information for me, but I want to do it to solidify things. I want to keep reading the news in Spanish and maybe also read some other articles. One of my goals for this year was to just learn more about different countries in Latin America. And obviously the news is one way to learn about some things in some countries, but I think it might be fun to also find like travel articles or articles about living in certain cities or things like that and learn some different things as well and also be exposed to some very different vocabulary. I want to maybe finish the poetry book that I'm reading. I want to read something in Spanish, but uh, I am going to let it kind of be whatever I feel like reading. And finally, I want to be more consistent with writing. I know I said that it's probably the thing that I've written in the most, but I'd just like to make sure that I'm being really consistent with it, even more consistent than I have been. And I'd like to start sharing my writing more in Spanish. I feel like I've been good about sharing my German writing, but not so good about sharing my Spanish writing. So I want to make sure that I'm posting that on journaling or sending it to my tutor or doing something in a way that I can get some feedback and see what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong, etc. Speaking of German, I had gone into this year thinking that German was going to be a slightly higher priority than Spanish, but something happened at the start of this year, nothing specific, but something in my brain just decided that Spanish was going to be slightly more of a priority. I was a little bit more interested in working on my Spanish than German. So I have tried to do things in German, but I wouldn't say that I've progressed in it as much as I have in Spanish. I also had not found a tutor yet at the start of this year. I was definitely trying out different tutors. In quarter two, I did find a tutor that I really like and I'm going to be continuing to take lessons with. So that problem has been solved, but it did mean that I wasn't consistently taking German lessons for most of this year. I also was not great with reading. I am nearly done with the first Percy Jackson book. I know I said that I wanted to finish, I think, two or three in the first half of the year. Has not happened, but that one definitely was uh, because of moving. I've been reading a lot more of it recently, and in addition to that, I haven't been doing well with reading articles either. I really haven't read all that much in German at all this year. I've been pretty good with journal entries this year with German. The thing is just they have been more journal entries about my life and less so kind of things about articles I'm reading because I haven't been reading articles. I have been posting them to journaling recently though, so I've definitely done well with that aspect of it. I definitely am open to feedback on those and have been taking the feedback that I get and improving through that. My overall goal for this year was to focus on politics and culture in German and I have been doing well with that. I would say not great because I haven't been reading as many articles as I'd like to, so I'll definitely continue to work on that. But in quarter three, I would say that even more so, my focus is to focus on filling in the gaps in my German. So whereas focusing on politics and culture is kind of moving in that advanced direction, I kind of actually want to do the opposite and go back to beginner material in German. Not beginner material that I've studied before, I'm not going back to review things, but like I said with Spanish, there are a lot of cases where I've realized I can talk about slightly more advanced topics, I have the vocabulary to do that, but I don't necessarily know how to talk about things that I did that day or cooking vocabulary or very basic subjects that I just haven't really had to use quite yet. So one of my goals is to kind of create a list of topics that I feel like I could not comfortably talk about in German right now. Things like, I know for a fact I could not follow a German recipe. I don't know words for uh, certain measuring utensils or certain items you would use to cook. And I want to try to work through one of those topics every week or two 
maybe more frequent, but I feel like doing a deep dive would be really great. Maybe reading articles based around that, writing journal entries based around that, or essays, speaking with my tutor about that subject. Really feeling like I feel really comfortable in each of those topics before I move on. I want to finally finish the first Percy Jackson book and read the second one as well. I maybe want to read the third one too. I think it's definitely possible if I really stick to it. I do a lot better with my reading habit, but at the same time, it did take me so long to read the first one so I don't really want to commit to that quite yet for this quarter. I want to write a journal entry a month, continue that, so at least four journal entries, but I would like them to be more essay type journal entries, so learn some of those transition words, learn to write in more of kind of an academic way. I want to work on really reading articles and then synthesizing my ideas and writing those out, and then continue to post those for feedback or send them to someone for corrections. Speaking of which, I would like to read articles. I I wanted to read three a month in German, which has absolutely not been happening, so I'd like to try to read a lot of articles, even more than my three a month, so that way I can kind of catch up to what my goal at the beginning of the year was. I want to try to figure out why I haven't been reading articles so much. I don't know, maybe I'm not as interested in the topics I've been picking as I thought that I might originally be. I've been reading a lot of more history and political articles, but I think that maybe if I switched to some topics that maybe I'm a little bit more interested in, it might might get me reading a few more. I want to watch more Dark. I started it, have not been watching it recently. I've watched a few episodes this past quarter, but pretty much none in quarter one, so I want to continue doing that, and of course I would like to watch some more movies in German. French is, as I said, kind of lacking in my life right now. I've recently just been feeling so out of touch with my French, which was definitely what I felt going into this year, and part of why I really wanted to focus on just making it intertwined with my life and something I didn't have to think about, but I have not totally succeeded there. I still feel like I'm not using it very often, and and I can kind of forget about it, it's in the background, and then I do something in French, and I'm like, oh yeah, I can use this, and I feel comfortable using this, and it has this kind of comforting feeling for me. It probably is my favorite language, so I definitely want to have it in my life more. I also really in the future would like to take the DALF, that's one of the few language exam goals I do have, is I want to pass the DALF exam, and in general I feel like my speaking ability is my worst ability in French, and I would really just like to get that to the point where I feel like it reflects the rest of my French level. So, this quarter, I'm really, really hoping to put an emphasis on getting French back in my life and working towards those things. I need to read more. I set out this year to try to read more in French than I do in English, which hasn't fully happened, but it also hasn't necessarily not happened. I just haven't been reading all that much. And I guess when I have been reading, it's been more Spanish or German, so I haven't really been reading too much in English, but I haven't been reading in French either. Part of my problem here, so another kind of cry for help, I guess, is that I'm having trouble finding books in French for a decent price. Every time I have looked for French ebooks, they have been so, so overpriced. The thing that I'm having the most trouble with is translations of books originally written in English. I definitely want to read a lot of native content in French. There are a lot of things that I want to read that are originally published in French. But because I'm trying to read more in French than English this year, what I've been trying to do is just find any book that I'm interested in reading in English in French and reading it in French instead. So any books that TikTok makes me curious about, I'd rather read them in French than in English, but I've had a really, really hard time finding any of those books for a decent price. So please help. I want to watch more movies in French. I feel like this one should not be as hard as it's been for me. I feel really comfortable watching movies in French. I don't need subtitles. I can just chill and watch a movie, and yet it doesn't happen. But again, it hasn't been happening because I haven't been doing it in any language, so just need to work on that a little bit more, and again, just push myself to do it in French if I'm going to do it in French or in English. I would like to this quarter find a tutor for French that I feel like clicks well with me. Speaking is my weakest skill in French, so I would like to work on improving that. I also just want to make sure that I maintain my level and feel like not speaking with people is definitely not helping that. And I feel like also just speaking with someone will be good preparation for the DALF in the future. I don't have any immediate plans to take the DALF. I feel like that's a year or two away at the soonest. That exam is expensive and 
I hate the sound of it, but at the same time, I would really like a DALF certificate. Similarly, I want to maybe look up some DALF type prompts and use those as kind of something to base my writing or speaking practice off of. Again, not too seriously focusing on passing the DALF right now, but using as just a general prompt some of the ideas or themes that the DALF touches on might be just something to help me focus my practice and something to help me out with deciding what to practice writing or speaking about. And I definitely want to get myself doing creative writing stuff in French. I have that goal overall for languages, but especially for French. I just feel like my French level and the creative things I do in my life and my experience translating French for creative works will all mix well together and be just a lot of fun and a good way to keep using my French and really just mix it in with my daily life. Another neglected language, Italian. This language has definitely been the most neglected this year. If French seemed neglected, Italian has just been completely forgotten. Not in terms of I've forgotten how to speak the language, but in terms of I've forgotten that I know how to speak the language. I actually read quite a few articles in Italian over the last five months. That's been one thing that I've been quite good at with Italian and one language where I've been decent at reading articles. I just have not done much with Italian at all, which needs to change this upcoming quarter. I do want Italian to stay as something that I'm just working on maintaining and unintentionally improving through immersive activities. It is not a focus for me right now. It's not that I'm considering doing what I did with Esperanto and just completely abandoning it and letting myself forget it and things, but I just don't know where I really stand with Italian right now in the sense that I don't really know what my goals are right now or why I'm studying it. And I think that this is totally natural. I think as you progress with languages, your opinions towards it will change and your reasons for learning it will change. I had what's happening with my Italian happen with my German as well and honestly trying to force a new reason or trying to find my reason that I was learning German didn't work. It honestly did kind of the opposite of work and the only thing that helped me kind of really figure out where I wanted to head with my German was putting it as something that I was just maintaining and having it as something on the back burner for a little while. It seems counterproductive to me honestly because you would think that pushing through and making new connections and things would be the way to do it, but I think for me, taking a little bit of time to just enjoy what I can do in the language and decide why I want to get better at the language is the best move for me. But the key part of that is that I need to be maintaining my Italian, which I would not say I've really been doing. I don't think I've forgotten my Italian. I actually tried to speak it to myself in the car the other day and it was fine, but I'm really not doing it as much as any of my other languages, so that needs to be fixed this upcoming quarter. I want it to be very present in my life. I don't want it to be gone. I just don't want to have it as something that I'm focusing on improving. I want to just hang out with Italian, sort of. Like, we're a casual thing. We're not a committed relationship. I'm just hanging out, watching movies in Italian, reading books. We're having fun. Hot language girl summer. So, with that, I want to do at least three journal entries. These can be written, or honestly, I can also record a video diary. I would be fine doing that. I just want to have some form of output in Italian. More than three would be better, but at least one a month. So I guess actually at least four since I've made quarter three, four months long now. And I think also if I use this as a time to talk about different things related to Italy or talk about my relationship with Italian, I can use this as a time to also figure out those long-term goals and figure out my relationship with it a little bit more. If possible, I'd like to do like a lesson a month in Italian. Italian, so nothing super intensive or anything like that, but just give me a chance to speak Italian with someone at least once a month would be great. The one issue with this is it can take a while to find a tutor that I like and French is definitely a higher priority for that, so I want to make sure that I find a French tutor I like more than I want to find an Italian tutor right now, but hopefully both can happen. And lastly, I'd like to watch movies in Italian. I'd like to read in Italian too, but that's honestly less of a goal this quarter. I really want to be watching things, so movies, I want to start watching Scam Italia, 
scam italia scam i don't know which it is so i'm going to start doing that i can also use that as a way to work on output as well maybe shadow some things through that and also just write entries or talk about what i watch and maybe i'll read a book we'll see i don't know so those are my main six, but moving on to the languages that I mentioned in my start of the year video that didn't end up happening at all in the first half of the year. Japanese. Uh, this was going to be my new project for this year, still might be my new project for this year, but it did not happen quarter one or quarter two, and I said that going in that I didn't think it was going to be something that I started in the first half of this year. The reason I'm no longer sure that it's even going to happen this year is that it's also not happening in quarter three unless something really wild happens. I honestly just don't want to be a beginner in a language right now. Other than ASL and Bulgarian, I don't want to be a beginner. Honestly, I don't even really want to be a beginner in Bulgarian or ASL right now, but it's where I'm at, so I'm embracing it. But I definitely do not want to be a beginner in a third language right now. I just I don't want it. Sometimes you want to be a beginner in a language. That's honestly why I dabble usually is that I'm craving that feeling of being a beginner and so I dabble so I don't have to commit to something and can just continue to feel like a beginner, but I don't want that right now. I just, I don't. I think Elise de Vega also summarized it really well when she said that she views beginner languages kind of like a newborn baby. That's always the analogy I've used as well. And I just feel like right now all of my little language children are like in middle and elementary school at least. Bulgarian and ASL are like in preschool at least. They're all off at school. I don't want a baby. I don't. The second reason is that I am not where I want to be with all of my languages in my routine right now. I feel like French and Italian have not fit in perfectly to the equation quite yet, and it wouldn't be fair to French and Italian, it wouldn't be fair to Japanese if I just threw that in as well. I, I just haven't hit the point where I feel like every language is getting the time that it needs and it deserves, and it's also a financial commitment. Like I said with the language lessons, there is a financial aspect to it, and if I don't feel totally comfortable with the languages that I'm at, giving them the lessons I want them to have and all of those things, it's just it's not time to throw another one into the mix. It's not fair to the old ones, it's not fair to the new one of Japanese, so not right now. And quite similarly, I feel like I am at my max capacity for life right now. I am not looking to add another thing into the mix. It's like that baby thing. I just, I'm too busy right now with things other than languages as well. Language learning is one hobby I have. And so honestly, even if I find some more time in my schedule this quarter, I would rather use it to get back into exercising. I haven't been good about that during the pandemic. To work on writing more and doing more creative things like crocheting. I'm trying to learn to crochet right now. So again, it wouldn't be fair to Japanese, it wouldn't be fair to my other languages, and it wouldn't be fair to me to add Japanese right now. So it's not happening. I'm really enjoying the lineup I've got going on right now. I need to fit French and Italian in in a better way, but other than that, I love the seven languages in my life, and I really, really love Japanese, and I do very frequently consider starting it, but as soon as I think about it for a little bit of time, I know that it's not the thing to do right now. So quarter three is not going to see me taking up Japanese probably, unless, like I said, things really, really change and really fast, so that way I can have a bit of time feeling like that's the case. If I do any Japanese, it will probably be more of a dabbling thing, just a thing for fun. But speaking of dabbling, I haven't dabbled at all over the last five months. Um, the two dabbling projects that I have are Esperanto, which was really just that I wanted to finish that Duolingo tree, and as always, dabbling in Scottish Gaelic. And I didn't dabble for pretty much all of the reasons I just listed for Japanese. I am just really happy with the lineup I have right now, and I'm really enjoying finally moving away from that very, very beginner stage in Bulgarian and really improving my Spanish and my German and just enjoying the language levels that I have right now. There have been many times, like with Japanese, that I have really wanted to do Gaelic stuff. I really want to do Japanese. I really want to do Gaelic. I want to take them both seriously at some point. I don't want Scottish Gaelic to always be a dabbling project. I want it to be something I take seriously too. I just have been very, very busy the last five months and I just don't 
really want to put any of my language energy towards anything other than the six that I'm taking seriously. So no dabbling and I don't have any plans to dabble in the future. That's sort of the point for dabbling for me. No plans, no goals, it just happens. But I do know that I probably won't be dabbling all that much because like I said, I don't wanna be a beginner right now, but we'll see how long that lasts. And that is it. Those have been all of my language updates for the first half of this year, which I guess it's been half the year since I've decided that quarter two is over. I am really excited for quarter three. I feel like this has the potential to go really, really well for me. I really, really feel like by the end of quarter three, I can really feel like all seven languages I use and I learn are really just in my life and something that I do every single day or multiple times a week, etc. And maybe that means changing some of my goals that I had at the start of this year, like not necessarily starting Japanese right now or changing the books that I'm using for Bulgarian, but I am really, really excited and I think that our goals need to be flexible anyway. I would love to know how your goals for 2021 are going so far and what you're hoping to accomplish over the next quarter. I am going to go to bed because it's 11 p.m. and I have work in the morning, but I really appreciate if you have stuck around through this probably epically long video to hear how my goals have been going. I will see you on Wednesday and remember, practice makes progress.